Hello everyone, my name is Robert Morrow and I would like to present to you uh, our confusion detection dataset that we made available for all uh, user modeling and personalization adaptation community. Uh, in our work, we focused on user confusion, which we define as a situation in which people are uncertain about what to do or are unable to understand something clearly. If we were able to detect user confusion in real time, we could adapt the user interface and thus improve user experience. Uh, we could do this, for example, with the help of personalized application guides. Uh, uh, as we can see here, when the confusion is detected, there might be a pop-up sh showing the list of available guides for the users to see. To, to choose from, or one of the guides, one of the predefined guides, could start up automatically if the user is detected to be confused. However, there is a lack of open data sets for confusion detection um, that would that actually hampers uh, the, the development in this uh, field um, because there aren't any standard data sets to compare benchmark uh, confusion detectors. There are some data sets for emotion recognition from facial expressions or for sentiment detection from text. Um, but there is, as far as we know, there is no open data set targeting specifically confusion that would contain modalities that were shown by other works and other works to be suitable for confusion detection, such as mouse or eye movements. And that's what we try to address our work. In order to collect the data set, we carried out a user study, which was held at the Slovak University of Technology in Bratislava, Slovakia. Uh, it was conducted in a room with 20 computers. Uh, each was equipped with a Toby eye tracker and standard keyboard and a standard coded mouse. Um, there were uh, together uh, four runs or four sessions with 16 participants at once at most and uh, together uh, we have we recorded 60 participants uh, 50 male and 10 female they were all students of our university and specifically students of human computer interaction course um, and they were awarded extra credit for their participations and since they were all students they were all between 20 and 23 years old um, as a stimulus, stim stimulus in our study, we used the real-world application of a travel agency, uh, which looked like this on the screen, um, on sc in the screenshot, and they, uh, users could actually navigate anywhere on the web page. Um, uh, we chose uh, this uh, agency or this web page, this web application, because its interface is fairly similar to many other e-commerce applications. Uh, and it has thousands of daily visitors, so its user experience is uh, already quite good. Uh, but still, uh, customer service receives uh, tens of requests daily uh, with uh, asking for help. And we, um, we communicated with their customer service and prepared tasks in coordination with them based on the real user's uh, usage or user experience uh, from the web. Uh, to uh, collect confusion labels, there are multiple uh, protocols or methods how to do it. Uh, so in related works, often a concurrent or a postdoc verbal protocol is used. Uh, in our work, we uh, decided to use labels via interface protocol first proposed by Konati et al. in 2013. And specifically, we modified the confusion buttons used in the work of uh, Lala et al. Uh, from 2016. Uh, we made a slight modification. So instead of text uh, reading, I'm confused, there was only exclamation mark. And we did this uh, change um, based on a result of a small pilot study that showed that uh, users were hesitant to click on the button, uh, maybe because they would express a negative emotion and there was some social desirability bias in the play. So, so we change it, change it to something uh, probably a little bit more neutral. And users were instructed to click on the button every time they needed help. 
uh, or when they would normally leave the web page because they could not find the necessary information and they would switch to some other travel agency or they would try Google or something else. So that's when they were supposed to click on the button. And uh, we instructed them that there would be no reaction after clicking on the button and users uh, could continue solving the task, which is what they also did. Um, the study scenario consisted of these steps. So first there was an introductory instruction uh, explaining the confusion buttons, the tasks, etc. Um, then we calibrated the eye trackers, and uh, next there were six tasks in um, randomized order. Uh, each block consisted uh, of a task instruction, then the actual task in a web browser, and a short post-task survey when we are where we ask users why they whether they clicked on the confusion button, why they clicked on it. Um, the study took about an hour on average, and we used iMotion software to orchestrate the study and collect the eye tracking data, but we used our own custom implementation of mouse logging. And the confusion button was injected to the travel agency web page using a JavaScript snippet, of course, with a consent. And um, we designed uh, six tasks, as I already mentioned, it was in cooperation with customer service of the travel agency. Um, Two tasks uh, tested newly added functionality, so we didn't really know whether they would be problematic or uh, turned out to be trivial tasks. Two tasks tested typical functionality, which is normally typically used, to, it's a common behavior on the web page. And two tasks were problematic uh, as identified by the customer service. Um, the result of our study is a confusion data set that we made available online. Uh, due to some technical issues, out of 60 participants, we were able to extract 57 valid mouse recordings, 56 eye tracker recordings, uh, both in CSV format, uh, one file for each recording, and together there are 54 participant recordings with both the mouse and the eye tracker data. Mouse data, uh, each recording or consists of these uh, features. Um, the most interesting ones are probably the event that was fired, such as mouse move, scroll, or the click on the confusion button, and the position of the mouse cursor at the time when the event was fired, and also identification of an HTML element that was below the cursor at the moment when the event was fired. Eye tracking data, uh, consists of these features, which are fairly typical, extracted from Toby Eye Tracker. The most interesting one, ones are probably those identifying position of a fixation and a fixation duration, but there is also the pupil size or distance uh, of the participant from the screen. And of course, there is user ID, task ID, similarly to the previous slide. So. Um, so similar to the to the mouse data, so actually users uh, can uh, so this is how data can be uh, can be mapped between eye tracking data and, and mouse data, and we also analyzed uh, the confusion log or how users uh, clicked on the confusion button. So there were together 108 confusion button presses in the data set, and uh, there were cases when participants clicked multiple times on a confusion button within one task. So they might click on it two or three times, and these were not misclicks. So there was some fair amount of time between the two clicks. Um, and this is because they, after clicking on the button, they could continue solving the task. And when they were feeling uh, confused again, then they would click on the button again. Uh, here we can see a distribution of the confusion, uh, confusion button clicks, uh, and we can see that the most problematic turned out to be uh, task 2, which is a newly added functionality, uh, followed by tasks 1 and 4. Oh, task 1 was identified as a problematic task given by the customer service, while task 4 was supposed to be a typical common user behavior. So it's a bit surprising that it caused so much uh, problems to the users, and maybe it was because of the complexity of the task. And uh, we can see that users tend to press the confusion button 80% into the task's total duration. Um, uh, so this is the total task duration, and this is time 
uh, the average time to the confusion to the confusion button press. Uh, here, uh, this is a bit skewed because there was only one uh, there was only one confusion button press. So this time is actually uh, larger than the average uh, task duration. And uh, we also compared uh, times. Um, the average times for solving tasks when a user reported a confusion and when there was no confusion reported. And we can see that on average uh, it took longer uh, to, to finish the task when there was some confusion. Um, uh, but uh, the only, uh, the only uh, statistically significant difference seems to be in task so three and five, and again, there is also some difference in task six, but bear in mind that there was only one uh, uh, occurrence of a confusion. So that's probably the reason. And there might be different reasons why there is a lack of significance, uh, but um, mainly it shows that time is it's, it's, uh, not, it's not sufficient to detect confusion, and uh, we need to use more sophisticated features, such as the ride from uh, mouse or eye tracker data. And in post task survey, uh, surveys, we uh, ask the users why they pressed the confusion button, and we see that they pressed it because they felt confused or they didn't know uh, where to click next. So it seems that they uh, follow the instruction. And uh, we also verified that uh, users did not use the confusion button as a sort of I give up button. Uh, because uh, there were many cases when uh, they solved the task even after a button press, or they could click um, or continue solving the task and then click on the button again as well, as we've already seen. So uh, when they wanted to finish a task without uh, solving it, they would click on a different uh, key, so they did not use the confusion button uh, as uh, I give up. I, I don't know how to continue at all. Um, so to conclude, uh, we made available a uh, confusion detection dataset that we consider unique in several ways. Uh, first, it captures users' natural interaction uh, using a mouse um, uh, with a real-world web application. Uh, and it contains two modalities, the mouse movements and the eye movements, uh, which were shown in the, the existing works to be suitable for uh, confusion detection, but which, which are not common in other data sets. And also, uh, the moments of uh, confusion of occurrence uh, or of user uh, confusion are annotated by the users themselves, which uh, might help with the, uh, might be good for the precision of, the, uh, of uh, these occurrences. Um, and uh, we think that the well, the data set can be used and was already used to train uh, confusion detectors. It can be used to benchmark confusion detectors in the future. Uh, these can be trained either on a task granularity, so for the whole task, or, or for the real-time detection, which is probably uh, more helpful because it's uh, mm, the adaptation that would follow confusion detection should be timely uh, if it's supposed to help the users. And we published our preliminary results uh, using the data set, but only the mouse data. Um, and we published it at the UMAP conference uh, last year. And there are, of course, some limitations of uh, the data set. Um, the main limitation probably is that we used only one, uh, one uh, website, one web application. Uh, and although we think it's fairly representative of uh, e-commerce domain, there might be some other types of confusions that were not captured in the data set, or it might be that uh, confusion manifests differently in different domains. So for example, an e-learning domain or so somewhere else. So uh, this should, um, this should uh, uh, be board in, in mind when someone wants to use the data set to benchmark uh, their confusion detector. Um, as to the future work, we plan to uh, extend the published data set um, because we recorded also a screen 
I'll capture the screen so we want to include the screen recordings as well as uh, yeah, detected emotions from uh, from facial features. Uh, at the moment, there are only mouse uh, and, uh, and mouse movement and eye movement data, but uh, this will be extended in the future. And that's all. Uh, thank you for your attention.